Hi, welcome to Kitty Witty Papercraft. I'm Amy, and this is the first in a series of videos that I am going to do um, sharing how to use some basic junk journal supplies. So when I say ju basic junk journal supplies, I'm talking about um, these sorts of things. Um, I sell these little kits in my Etsy shop. They're just called junk journal um, supply starter kits. And it's just got these sorts of um, supplies in them, that, things that are commonly used in junk journals. So tickets, um, this one has a time card, um, guest checks, library cards, there's a few in here, different colors. Um, it's another guest check, this tag, bingo cards, and some Rolodex cards. These are really fun. And I've got some little like clothing tags and some library card pockets. So this video, I'm going to share some ideas for how you can decorate the library card pockets and how you can use them in your junk journals or your planners, even scrapbook layouts. And my idea is I'm going to um, show some a different idea, a different supply in each of the videos and a few different ways to use them. So like I said, in this video, I'm going to share how you can use these little library card pockets. So these come in two different sizes. This is the low back library card pocket. You can also get them in a tall back. Um, sometimes they have adhesive already on them. I like the low back ones. I just feel like they're a little bit more versatile because when you put it on a page, it doesn't cover up as much of the page. Now, of course, when you put something in it, like a library card, it's going to come up and, and pretty much take up the same amount of space that a tall back pocket would, um, but you might not always want to put a library card in these. You may have ephemera or photos or memorabilia or something that you put in that is shorter. So to me, this just gives you a little bit more flexibility, but either a library card would work for this or library card pocket size would work for this. And um, a little plug, I do sell these in my shop. Um, I sell packs of 10 of these library card pockets. Um, as well as the um, junk journal supply kits that has like a little bit of everything in it. So um, this is what we're going to make. So these are just five little pockets that I already made and um, we're just going to do each one, one by one. And these are just pretty simple ideas. You really don't need anything special tool-wise to make these, I don't think. Um, so we'll get started and I'll just kind of talk about what you need as we go through each one. So let me put these to the side and I think we're going to start with this one right here. And these really are like totally simple, but <laughs> they're just like little ideas I thought I would share. And I would love if you have ideas for how you would decorate these, I'd love to hear. Let me know. Just um, leave a comment in the comment box below. So I like putting little um, dimensional things on the pockets and this little banner is kind of a, a fun little thing that you can add to it. So the first thing is to cover up the um, surface with the scrapbook paper. So you can totally leave like the back um, open or some of it not decorated. Sometimes I will just put, um, let me show you the inside of my traveler's notebook. Um, I have one that just has like some stickers and washi and a word sticker and nothing else is decorated on it. And then once you put like the doily in and you put a library card in that's maybe decorated, that can look just as nice. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, but in this one, we are going to cover this with scrapbook paper. This is my first tutorial, I think, that I'm doing. So I'm really nervous. <laughs> I actually taught a workshop, a video workshop, um, two workshops this summer. That was my first um, foray. So technically this isn't my first, but it's my first one on my YouTube channel. So I'm kind of nervous. Um, so hopefully that doesn't come through too, too much. <laughs> um, I figure there's no better way to get used to it than just to, to do it. I also am not super... Um, good at editing yet. So my videos are going to be kind of just live as we go. And I probably won't do a whole lot of editing yet. 
And that is partly why I haven't been doing these videos yet because I keep telling myself I have to learn how to edit first before I do anything and I just have not been able to find the time. So um, I promise that they will get a little fancier with the cute music and the little sped up parts and everything. I think that makes videos a lot more interesting but um, I am not quite there yet. So I think thank you for checking this out anyway and kind of bearing with my my growing pains. So I am just putting some double-sided tape on. Oh, I have the worst time getting off double-sided tape. It is really kind of comedic how much trouble I have with this um, tape all the time. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So I'm using um, 1 8 inch double-sided tape and you can use any side. It doesn't matter. Um, I think I've shared before the double-sided tape that I like to use I buy on Amazon and the brand is BEST, B-E-S-T, like in all caps. That's just kind of how it's uh, listed on Amazon and they have um, all different sizes. This, this is the 1 8 inch and it also comes in a quarter inch, which, oh yeah, here it is, quarter inch, which is what I use most of the time. I'm not sure why I put the the skinnier one down, no particular reason. This is a half inch and they also have a one inch wide. So I use all three of them or four of them just depending on what I'm uh, making. But yeah, I love it. It's really, really sticky and it's a good deal on Amazon. So then I just take my um, scrapbook paper and just line it up. And Oh, sorry. I am like, I'm tethered to my, to my phone with my microphone and I need my glasses. <laughs> So here's another dilemma I have. I really need to look through my camera and I can't see up close with my glasses on. I can't see detail anymore. So I take my glasses off so I can really see fine detail, but then I can't see like all the way down to my desk what I'm doing. Oh, it's terrible. Getting old is quite interesting. Okay, so then we just need to trim off the excess paper here. I like to do it this way versus um, like measuring and cutting the paper first and then gluing it down because I am terrible at measuring and cutting a straight line. So I usually will um, leave some excess and then just cut the excess off after I attach it. <laughs> I do that almost all the time. And then on the background here, I'm gonna add some washi tape. So just a basic um, washi tape is almost the same width here and it blends in with the background um, to not have the entire space covered with washi. Um, so I'm not worried about a little bit of the background not being covered in washi is what I'm trying to say. So, and if you're making this at home, like, you know, just for yourself, like I wouldn't be super particular or maybe that's just me so when I'm making something just for myself I like I'll just wrap the edges around here like this um, if I'm making this for someone else like if I'm selling I will be way more particular and I will cut all the excess off but I'm just gonna cut the little points off there um, because it's just for me and I'm not super perfectionist when it's just my own personal thing um, only when I'm selling things <laughs> okay so now we're gonna make the little banner part. So I just use a punch. So yeah, that is one like, I guess special tool you need. Well, you don't need it. Um, it just makes it quicker and easier, but obviously you can just cut out a rectangle shape and then just notch out the bottom and have a banner that way. You don't need a punch for that, um, but it does make it pretty quick and I make banners pretty often. So um, I found it was worth um, investing in the punch there. So we just need, four little banner pieces and I'm just using scrap papers that I have. These are Maggie Holmes collection papers. Um, so yeah, I just am using some scraps. I save all my scraps as I'm sure most of you guys do too. And they come in handy for all kinds of small projects. So we just need four of these. Okay, and then to get them on the banner, I punched holes. So I have a hole punch that has a tiny little 
hole um, maker on it. And I don't know the size. Oh, it's one eighth inch. I thought maybe it would say on there. Um, so it's a one eighth inch hole. There you go. And I don't measure where I'm placing it. I just, um, this little thing here is not working super well anymore, but I just eyeball it and do a little hole in each, like almost at the corner. And that is where we're going to string our, our banner. Um, I'm trying to think, I think you could probably do this without a punch. You could like poke a hole with like a, um, thick needle and then you can just thread your um if you have the twine that we're going to use like on a like embroidery needle something with like a wide eye I think you could probably just thread it on with a needle that way if you don't have that size punch okay so now we have our little banner pieces and then I'm just going to take some twine this is American Crafts um twine but any will do and I'm going to start with um, this end actually so I'm going to start and work from the banners that I want to be on the left side and I'm going to put on first and I just start in the back <clears throat> and thread to the front here sometimes the thread frays a little bit but it usually works pretty well to not have to um, glue the end of this, but sometimes I will take a, like a little dab of liquid glue and just kind of get those ends to not fray so much while I'm threading. I think banners look so cute. There's just, I don't know, something really fun and it creates movement um, depending on how you attach the little pieces. And I'll show you that in just a second. So see, this would be a good part to like speed up and have music. <laughs> All right, thank you for bearing with me on that. Oh, that flipped around. So I wanna leave um, enough of a tail so I can tie a bow on either end. Oh, I missed a hole here, or I pulled it through, huh? Okay, so. I'm just kind of cinching it down so I have room to make a bow, so. Okay, there's a bow on that end. And I left it on instead of measuring the, um, the string first, so I knew how much I really needed and didn't have too little or too much. Oh, I missed one of the holes. Well, you know, we're just gonna leave it like that. It'll be all right. Um, and I wanna go ahead and tie the other end and then trim it, and then we'll kind of place the little banner pieces on there. And I leave this tail a little bit longer than the other side, just for, just for fun, just so it's not too perfect. I don't like when things are too perfect. And you know what, that just makes life easier because you don't have to fuss about things being too perfect and they really do look more natural, I guess is the word for it, um, when you just kind of leave things a little bit imperfect. So, um, so yeah, you can just kind of play around with the pieces of the banner. So it's like when they're flip, um, moving in the wind, you know, they're kind of going different directions. They overlap a little bit um, and some don't. And so when you get it where you like it, what I did on mine up here was I didn't even attach the bows. I actually attached some of the flags um you could put a little glue dot underneath but i knew that the stickiness of that little dot would still show beyond this so you could use a little dot of liquid glue like with a, um like glossy accents has a little nozzle on their tip you could do that but i find just using um, either a glue dot or a glue stick underneath the um the flags works really well um, so once you have them where you want just add a little little glue there. And you won't really even be able to tell that I missed the one hole there. And this one can kind of be coming off the edge. Again, just for a little visual 
interest there. And then to finish it off, I love using word stickers on like everything. I love words. I love text. I love the graphics of it. Um, I love the meaning of the words too. So um, I just used my, my sticker book. So one thing that I like to do when I'm going to do a project, and this is the kind of thing that you could make multiples, you know, at the same time, like sit down, if you're going to get your stuff out anyway, make a few up at a time. And when you do that, um, limit yourself to just a few items, like a few pieces of scrapbook paper. Um, like in this case, I have a sticker book, one sticker book. I don't have all of my different um, sticker collections. I have a few different sticker books and then I have alphas. Instead of having like all of those things in front of you, it tends to make it feel kind of overwhelming. Like you don't know what to pick. You don't know where to start. So I find it's easier to limit myself to begin with and just kind of like clear a spot and set it up with the papers and like the stickers and the word stickers. I have one sheet of word stickers and one sticker book and a few pieces of, you know, scrap paper and that's it. And that's all I'm allowed to work with. <laughs> and I find it really, keeps things like from feeling overwhelming, I guess is the best way to put it. So let's see, um, I'm working on a really small table. So I'm trying to find a space here. So um, yeah, I just used a little B. I'm going to make it the exact same way as my little demo one. Um, this book also has word stickers in it. It has both um, like characters, flowers, and words in it all in one. I love these um, crepe paper makes these sticker books now. There's like over a thousand stickers and I know they have them for a couple different collections. Like they have Maggie Holmes and I think Amy Tangerine might be another one. Um, I think Paige Taylor Evans might have one. So yeah, they're great. So yeah, so this is a finished pocket. And then you, we'll talk a little bit at the end um, about some different things that you can do with these. So that's our first one. And for the next one, let's tackle, let's do this one. So this guy, I already put a library card in. Um, this one's super, super simple. So this is just washi tape um, put in like a stripe pattern on the pocket. So it's really, really easy. And what I would do is just choose um, like a one, two, three, four, five. So I use five different washi tapes and depending on the width of yours, um, you'll just kind of have to see how many you can fit on one one. And I just picked out five coordinating washi tapes. You know, they all have a little bit of the same colors in each other and that's how I decided what to use. And then um, this is another one where you can just kind of tear the ends and just wrap it around the edge. If I was selling this, I would cut the edges or maybe actually finish the back off after I wrapped all the washi around it. But since this is just going in my personal stash, I am not going to do that. Um, and I like using different widths of washi on, um, on this little project. So some are wider, some are narrower and it just kind of changes it up a little bit. Um, again, just for more interest. Attempt to put that on straight here. There we go. Oops, I missed a spot there, didn't I? Dang. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I mean, washi tape is so awesome. It melds like right into what you're doing. So it just looks like it's part of the design. And I love that. It's so versatile. I know many of you agree. I know there's lots of washi lovers out there. And this is just a really fun way to use it. And these washies come from all different sets. Um, this one actually, and this is getting old. I think that's, I've had this one for a while. I'm almost at the end of it and it doesn't really want to cooperate too much. This is actually from Crate Paper's Snow and Cocoa winter, um, like Christmas washi set. And I love it so much. So I took it out of my, um, oh, this is not going to cooperate now. 
because I want to do a video. <laughs> um, I took it out of that set because I love the color. It's like the perfect shade of turquoise. And I use that a lot in my work. So kind of borrowed it from, from there. And I'm so sad they don't have that collection anymore. I, I did hoard a few packs of that washi. So I think I have a couple rolls left. Um, but it's one of those, like, I'm going to be really sad when it's gone. And I'm going to have to try to find... Um, something similar to replace it. It's hard to find that color, that color turquoise in um, washi tape. So this one was a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna fold that over and I am gonna trim the ends on that since it's kinda stuck to itself there. So just that little bit of washi, just, you know, it's a very inexpensive way to change the way something looks completely. And then I just came back up with this um, washi here to decorate the background or the, the top part of the pocket. Oh, I hope I'm doing that on camera. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so then you can totally leave it like this. I think that's really cute but I wanted to um, add a little bit extra and this is going to be a little bit trickier for me to do on camera. Hopefully it'll work out this time. Um, I added a little bit of doily to this. So what I did was I just um, lined up the washi like kind of where I want it to end and I can see through the doily where the top of my pocket is and I'm going to add some thin double-sided tape at the top of my pocket here. And then I will line this back up and then we're gonna trim it off. So I'm using the really thin eighth inch um, tape here and just putting it right at the top of the pocket. Doilies are so great for so many things, just adds a little extra something there. So I just stick this down here. And then to cut it off, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crease it, fold it over and crease it. And then I'm just gonna cut it right along this line. Um, how did I do that before? Yeah. This is a little trickier. to get the cut really smooth. Just kind of an awkward position, but I think it looks really cute. And if I'm just doing this for my own, like paper crafting, I am okay with that. Again, not something I would probably put in a product I was selling. Um, I'm just kind of folding over. There's a teeny bit of extra there, but you can fold that over and then just cut off the little bit of excess there on the end. Okay. And then you could leave it at that point or you could add like a little die cut. So I had a little fussy cut um, die cut here. And because the background is already busy and he's busy too, I use some glue dots, um, some foam adhesive dots, I should say. And that just kind of helps him pop up off of the, um, the background a little bit since it's already busy. And you can have him kind of even come off the pocket a little bit. So his tail is kind of at the edge there. So that is our second pocket. Put those to the side. So we've got five pockets total. And this is another pretty simple one. Um, I love, love, love this washi. This is probably my favorite washi, this yellow and pink and green. Um, 
actually put a box of it on my table to share with you guys because I know someone will probably ask me where I got it. Um, the brand is Go Washi, and it actually was a, another brand before this. Um, I, I just bought like a second batch of these. Um, I actually bought like four or five boxes because, you know, afraid that they're going to discontinue it. So I bought a bunch and because um, I use it all the time. And they actually have a website, gowashi.com. Um, that's what it says on the, on the back. So I would check them out. I'm not even going to tell you the store that I bought them from because I bought it online from a seller that is really unreliable. They have like terrible shipping. They take like two weeks to ship and they've lost my products or my orders before. Um, and I think one of the things I still haven't gotten a refund on and it's been months, um, their customer service is really bad. So I'm not even going to tell you where I got it, got it from, but it's hard to find. Um, but now that it says gowashi.com, you could probably check that website and find it directly there. I would recommend that. <laughs> okay, so so this one's really simple. Again, this is another one with washi, but not covering the entire um, thing. And I like this washi um, really, really, like talk about like melting into the background. Um, this washi really does that. And I think it's because it's like true Japanese washi, it's paper, like some, washies feel kind of like waxy or like kind of like a plastic coating on them but this washi is like paper so i just love it um and because of the, this one being like a wider one and it looks kind of like a garden i thought that was cute at the bottom but i think any washi that's like a little bit wider would be good um if you wanted to try like this style so like a wider one at the bottom and then um, I decorated the back of this one with a couple different washies of this yellow gingham. I uh, do not remember where I got this yellow gingham. I've had it for a long time and I feel like it's probably a pretty basic kind of washi. It would be easy to find somewhere. I will trim that at the end. And then just for a little extra interest. I'm using another one of the washies from that set and this one's a skinny one and I love how the sets have washies with different widths so it's really great for projects like these where you want to add just some different kind of like layers and dimension to it and then I just added a little bit of washi here as a background to the um, top of the card underneath the ticket. Here's the one I'm looking for. And the tickets are another favorite item I like to use in my um, in junk journals. I just think they're so fun. There's just, they're a great little space where you can add like stickers and word stickers. You could stamp on them. I am a terrible, terrible stamper, so you will like rarely see me stamping. Um, but some people are really good at it, and tickets are great for that <laughs> if you like to stamp. So you, again, you can leave this just as it is, um, but on this one, I took a ticket and just kind of layered it over the washi, so the washi's in the background, and then I stapled it. And that's another like favorite way of attaching things that I love. I just love the dimensionality that um, didn't go in, that staples give, just that little bit of like texture. And I just love the way it looks. And then on top of that, I added a butterfly and a word sticker. And again, since I'm only using this little sticker book, um, I pulled the sticker from here. And because the stickers are really thin and I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension. Um, I'll show you what I did to do that. If I can find that same sheet of butterflies, I thought it was in the back. Hmm. Well, I think it's here. Yeah. Okay. So these stickers in this book, um, especially on this page, they're really, really thin. So. I just stuck the sticker down to a piece of white cardstock 
and then just cut it out and then attached it. So that just gave it, um, you know, a little bit of extra dimension and I'm going to attach it with a, um, just in the center with adhesive, just in the center of the butterfly. And I'll show you that in just a second. And it allows you to kind of pop the wings up a little bit. So I like that little 3D effect that you can get. So, okay, we're not supposed to be perfectionists here, right? Got white showing. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so once the sticker is on the cardstock, you can kind of bend it up a little bit and it has like a little 3D effect. So I just use a glue dot right in the center of the back, like right below the little center part there. And then he just kind of pops up and then you can just finish it off with a word sticker. So, um, Sunshine would be a good one on this one. It's very yellow. And just kind of place that where you want. And then you could add another little sticker right there in that space. Um, like a little gold heart would be cute there, I think. Let's see. Yeah. So that is our third library card pocket and I think next we'll do this one so everything doesn't have to be scrapbook paper um, this one actually has fabric on the front of it so all you need for this obviously is a small scrap of fabric and double-sided tape so again just using double-sided tape. You could use liquid glue here. Um, I just really love, I mean, obviously this isn't messy like liquid glue can be. Um, and this tape is really sticky, I'm telling you. So it will hold the fabric really well. And fabric has, you know, a pattern like paper does, but it's just got that textural um, thing going for it and also like the edges fray. So when I cut this, um, I cut a little bit, I leave like a little bit of um, fabric on the edges and it'll fray over time. And I just, I love the way that looks. Again, it's just like not being too perfect. It also um, reminds me of just vintage, you know, how things are worn. I love that. 